thank you so much for chatting with me. I really appreciate it. Oh, of course. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time. I'm sure you're busy. Oh, no, this is, it was great. And it's a privilege. This is, this is a stunning film. Um, and, and just, I mean, from, from the story, the, the story of the, these men to, I mean, to the, I mean, the visuals as well. Uh, it's just, just gorgeous. I was wondering what, what it is that brought you to, to La Liste. Uh, well, I had done some ski expeditions in the Yukon with Sam Anthem Adam um, before this project. Um, and so I got to meet him there and was really impressed by his like um, skills. And, and he reached out to me and said, you know, hey, like Jeremy and I are trying to do this project. We're looking for a production company to partner with. And, and do you think you're interested? And I thought, um, yeah, it was, you know, I was initially drawn into like wanting to see these places that these guys wanted to ski. And then I, you know, I realized it was also an opportunity to tell a, a unique story. And so, uh, yeah, we, we all made it happen. Well, I mean, uh, I mean, unique story is, is right for sure. I mean, these guys, these guys are, well, okay. You know what? I just, I just need to ask what's wrong with them. Uh, no. <laughs> No, honestly, they 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 seem amazing, and what they're doing is incredible. But I mean, we see in the film this is terrifying with very real stakes. So yeah, what's, what's wrong with them? Is- I'd say they have like insanely high risk tolerances because they're like they're so niche in their sport, and you know I think they're Europeans, and Europeans really have like a a, a, a real deep like mountain culture ingrained in the Alps. And so I think that in that subculture, their risk tolerances are really high, like in places like Chamonix and in Switzerland, which is sort of like the birthplace of steep skiing. They've been doing it for like 50 years. And so I think the bar has been raised there and they're just so comfortable in really crazy positions because they just grew up in, in these insane mountains. I mean, the Alps are a lot bigger than the mountains we have in Canada. So they're already used to being in, in gnarly mountains. And uh yeah, I think it's just like this tolerant, the risk tolerance and the culture that they grew up in, they're, they're just used to it. Yeah, I mean, you're right on this risk tolerance thing, because this is, this is like, these are incredible, like, this is not your average mountain climbing expedition or whatnot. This, these, these are incredible heights that they're throwing themselves off of, yeah. um, you know, in a manner of speaking, of course. Um, I, I'm thinking from you, I mean, as, as a director, you know, this sort of, the footage you've got is absolutely stunning. Um, so what is, how did you manage to get such incredible, incredible shots and what are you looking to tell or how are you looking to tell your story? Yeah. I mean, I feel like, you know, te- filmmaking is like a team sport. So you have to build, it's like a hockey team or a football team. Like you have to build a team to do it. And so I was really lucky to just have like really highly skilled people on my team. And basically how we'd split it up is like, we'd have these like professional mountain guide alpinists who are also like really talented filmmakers would be doing like the really crazy on wall descents and in above, you know, 5,000 meters. And then we'd have multiple drone pilots um, that were stationed throughout the mountain as well to get different angles of the descent. And then we'd have you know, really highly skilled long lensmen on the other side of the valley catching the descent. And then we are all sort of communicating through radios. But I mean, it's this traditional in a traditional film set, you just you it was sort of designed like each department or each person was this really highly skilled in one fashion of filmmaking or one discipline. But in expedition style filmmaking, which is how we made this, um, you, everybody has to be like a multi-tool. You got to be able to do tons of different disciplines within filmmaking or tons of different skill sets. And that's sort of where, where I went with the choosing of the team. And, um, and you got to be able to like live, you know, get along with these people in really uncomfortable environments. So it was definitely not me who was like, getting all these shots it was a team of people and um and it was just knowing how to work together as a team that would make make things better or worse you know uh, with that in mind i mean i i want to ask you about the fall yeah because that is 
that is just horrendous to watch as a viewer. What was that like for you guys to, to see that unfold in front of you? Well, it was crazy. It was you know, obviously life changing for all of us. I mean, it was so basically those guys had like climbed and skied the mountain already. And all the cameramen were just packing up and coming off the mountain when it happened. So nobody was filming it um, because because it had already been a 14 hour day at that point. You know, we had been up since three in the morning. And, um, but the mountain heated up in the sun in the day because all these mountain ranges are sort of close to the equator. They like the snow can turn to ice is, you know, 15 minutes after the sun gets on them. So yeah, unfortunately like Mika fell and, and fell, um, but no, but we didn't think we captured it because Jeremy had just forgotten to turn off his GoPro. Mm. He had just finished skiing. He was exhausted from the whole thing and he just left his GoPro running. And basically the GoPro ran as long as there was card space until the battery ran out. Mm. And so that's how that was all captured, but he didn't know he was filming any of it. Mm. And then in the rescue, the GoPro fell off his helmet and fell mm. under a, fell under a little bush. And, um, sorry, I'm getting angry. <laughs> See, it almost happens to me too. Um, so yeah, it was the camera fell under a bush by the camp, mm. the mid camp, like down the mountain quite a ways. And when two days later, we were packing up that camp and we found the GoPro under the bush by his tent. And, uh, and then we discovered like a day later when we went through all the footage that he had captured that. And um, yeah, so it was, it, that was absolutely like crazy that we even managed to capture it. I remember like calling my wife on the sat phone and calling my business partner on the sat phone, telling them there had been a big accident. And they're like, well, did you film it? And I was like, no, it was like it was the cameraman. It was after we had no idea. And I was like kicking myself. And, and, uh, and then it just, Jeremy happened to just leave his GoPro running and, and you got a first person point of view experience of him saving Mika's life. Yeah, I, I was wondering that I was watching it. I'm like, this, I, I was wondering if it was GoPro because I'm like, this is really like an almost an intimate shot. It's it's like yeah. such, it's so visceral. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was crazy. Like we didn't even know if we were going to be able to use that footage in the film until, you know, really late in the editing process because of legal issues. And um, it really changed Jeremy and Sam's decision-making for the next expeditions and because we had seen the consequences of just slipping basically you know slipping with a heavy camera bag that's what happened wow. and we had, to, we had to you know it's like you don't even see the full fall in the film but it's like it was insane um and yeah it's like that's we left it in there it is super graphic and hard to watch but it's that's what happened and it was the truth and you needed to see that to understand how these guys is decision making happen from there on out well that i mean that's exactly it right like this i mean this is a documentary right so you i mean you have the opportunity to document this and once you've you've got that cleared um that's got to change you that's got to yeah. change you and, and them um and I, I was wondering you know oh actually you know at, at the end of the film too there's a great line they talk about when you've got all these all these people talking about about why they do this and one of the one of the comments is that you learn a lot about yourself. Yeah, um, I was wondering what that means to you, and and if you could elaborate a little bit. Um, yeah, I think I think it's like when you go out and you try and do something that is really difficult or that's never been done or that pushes your limits, you are tested and and you react and, and then you react in those moments. And then later in life, you have to reflect on, on the way you acted or the way you behaved and, or how you dealt with those situations. And I feel like that's what you sort of learn from and it seeps back into your life, you know, months after these expeditions are over. And, and, um, and I feel like that's, that's why people love these crazy expeditions and, and exploration because it's like there's it just teaches you so much about yourself and then you have to learn and then you do it again and you become a little more successful and it's an incredible learning curve but 
um, it's just challenges, you know, it's like they're in your face and they're real and you can't avoid them. And I feel like you learn more from your, your failures than, than your successes. And it's, it's, you know, it's a privilege to go on those trips. It's not like everybody can do that obviously and take the time and, and, and do that. And it's, um, you, yeah, the mountains, the mountains are these incredible things that challenge you and, and you have to, you know, you have to learn from it. Yeah, I, I can see, I can see that. I, honestly, Eric, the film is, the film is stunning. Oh, thanks, man. Um, it really, truly is. It, it's kind of funny because, you know, right now with, with us all being at home, this is a film I really think you need to see in the theater to sort of <laughs> understand it. Yeah. Like some, somebody watching this on Netflix or something at home or something, you know, it's just not the way to experience it. Right. Um, but, uh, but more just as, just as powerful as visuals are the, the stories of the, these, these people who risk their lives to do it. So thank you so much for, for oh. chatting with me. And yeah, of course, anytime, man, I'm, uh, I'm glad you liked it. And thank you for taking the time. Well, I appreciate that. All right. Have a great day. Wish yeah. you the best. Take care, man. Thank you so much.